When anyone thinks of major landmarks in New York City, people can typically name three. The Statue of Liberty, the Empire State Building, and the World Trade Center, also known as the Twin Towers. On September 11, 2001, the Twin Towers fell due to a highly coordinated terrorist attack by the Islamic terrorist group Al-Qaeda. Today, I wanted to analyze the architecture of the Twin Towers. My condolences go out to anyone who has lost someone to the 9-11 terrorist attacks, and I want to sincerely thank Thank anyone who has served as a firefighter, policeman, or paramedic. Your work does not go unnoticed. This video is not intended to offend any. thought it would be interesting to analyze the actual architecture behind the World Trade Center. Please consider subscribing. Thank you. Architect and Budget Japanese architect Minoru Yamasaki designed the World Trade Center and it held the title of the tallest building in the world from 1972 to 1974. Over half a million people were accommodated by the Twin Towers on a weekly basis. In 1962, over 40 architects were considered to design the World Trade Center, but Yamasaki and an associate architect, Emery Rothensons, were hand-selected for this job. The budget was around $280 million. In today's currency, that is the equivalent of $2.4 billion. The building's function was to promote international trade. In an interview, Yamasaki explained the facility was envisioned as a physical expression of of world peace and as a place for communication, information, proximity, and face-to-face -face convenience for a variety of business and financial stakeholders." End quote. The site. The original 17-acre site located in Lower Manhattan was occupied by small retail tenants and in narrow streets. Yamasaki saw this as a great opportunity to completely demolish all existing site buildings. He hoped this would create, quote, an oasis of public space in an otherwise congested area, end quote, all while adding more subway routes beneath it. The building's goal was 12 million square feet and was to include an open plaza to alleviate tension between such tall structures. Over a hundred schemes and iterations were developed and proposed for this building's quote, super block. The biggest site challenge though was dewatering the site as it can easily fill with water from the Hudson River. Slurry walls were used along with reinforced concrete walls to prevent leakage and the building's potential collapse due to water damage. Organization of the towers. The towers shared a simple plan, a 208 foot square surrounded by an 87 foot by 135 foot core that was composed of 47 steel columns. The core contained all of the building services, included the elevators, stairs, bathrooms, and mechanical operations. A unique feature of the building circulation was the usage of sky lobbies. Sky lobbies are also typically used today, but at this time this was very innovative. By dividing the structure into thirds, these interchanging floors were accessed by a large express elevators and provided the opportunity for occupants to switch to smaller local elevators that serviced a particular section of floors. This element allowed for the stacking of elevators, thereby decreasing the number of required elevator shafts. The floors, four inch thick concrete on a steel deck supported by a six foot eight inch grid of prefabricated trusses, carried the load between the core and the exterior walls. This freed up interior office space and reduced the need for interior columns. On the exterior walls of the tower, they utilized Verndeel trusses. Each facade contained 59 17-inch columns on a 40-inch grid. As a result, this only allotted for around a 22-inch wide window. Narrow windows were a stylistic and personal preference prevalent in Yamasaki's work, as he did fear heights. The exterior columns were extruded 12 inches beyond the glazing, shading much of the windows, and this smartly reduced energy consumption. Toward the base of the building, each group of three columns merged into one, creating a wider glazing in the lobby. Yamasaki originally planned to use steel as the facade material, but to save cost, a cheaper new silver 
aluminum alloy was developed specifically for the World Trade Center. On April 4th, 1973, the World Trade Center opened. Its total price tag was $90 million. This is the equivalent of $9.2 billion today. Initial reaction. It was heavily criticized for altering the already beautiful skyline. However, it gradually became more appreciated. It's commonly featured in many Hollywood movies. It freed up much needed public space given the density of Manhattan. Yamasaki explained that it is the responsibility of the architect to make most of the urban condition by considering the human scale. Yamasaki died of cancer in 1986. This is a trigger warning graphic footage ahead. September 11th, 2001 at 8.45 a.m. on a clear Tuesday morning, an American Airlines plane crashed into the North Tower of the World Trade Center in New York City. The impact left a gaping, burning hole near the 80th floor of the 110-story skyscraper. Then, 18 minutes after the first plane hit, a second plane, United Airlines Flight 175, turned sharply towards the World Trade Center and sliced into the South Tower near the 60th floor. In less than 15 minutes after the terrorist struck the Pentagon, at 9.45 a.m., the South Tower collapsed after 56 minutes after being hit by Flight 175. The structural steel of the skyscraper was built to withstand winds in excess of 100 miles per hour, but it also met standards to house and contain large conventional fires. However, it could not withstand the tremendous heat generated by the burning jet fuel. Only a few columns failed because of the explosion. But as they collapsed, the undamaged columns were left trying to hold the building on their own. Also, the steel columns in the World Trade Center lost strength rapidly when the fire reached over 400 degrees Fahrenheit. At 10.30, the north building of the Twin Towers collapsed. Two thousand nine hundred and seventy seven Americans individuals lost their lives to the nine eleven terrorist attacks. Over twenty five thousand people were also injured. On December 18th, Congress named September 11th a Patriot Day to commemorate the anniversary of the 9-11 attacks. Michael Arad's reflecting absence sits on ground zero in the tower's absence, memorializing the victims of 9-11. It consists of two reflecting pools with waterfalls rushing down where the Twin Towers once stood. I was only four years old when 9-11 happened. But I understand to this day, 9-11 is a hard day for most Americans. Building code changes. Now in a post 9-11 world, there are new challenges you face in regards to public safety. The International Code Council, ICC, is responsible for developing the construction industry building safety codes and standards used throughout the United States. For instance, new codes were introduced because of the 9-11 terrorist attacks to protect the integrity of new buildings. For instance, they raised the fire resistance standard in high-rise buildings more than 420 feet tall. Also, more robust fireproofing for buildings in more than 70 feet tall, which will less likely be dislodged by impacts or explosions. Shafts enclosing elevators and exit stairways must have impact-resistant walls. Self-illuminating exit pathway markings at all exit stairways must be provided and must provide a lighted pathway when primary and secondary lightings fail. Lastly, radio coverage system within the building allows emergency personnel to better communicate within the building and with emergency staff outside the building supporting the response. That's it for today's video. Please leave me a like if you learned something new and subscribe if you want more content like this.